Hello everyone, this is Voice KC and today we're trying to do something different. <laughs> Not the least of which is because I'm doing kind of a vocal reveal right now. Hi, that's that's how I sound like. Uh, anyway, my last thing that I've uploaded was this Cables GL kind of a music video, I guess. So uh, I kind of wanted to show you how I did that because Although I'm by no means a Cables GL expert, I actually think I've established kind of a couple neat tricks that I haven't seen anyone use that much. So, I don't know, it might actually help someone actually competent do something cool with their stuff. So, let's get started. So, this is uh, the project for Sidereal Collapse that you might immediately notice doesn't really look like your typical um, Cables GL setup. Because what that usually looks like is kind of a tree-like structure with a bunch of, well, cables uh, all around the place. And here we've got like a more like an orchard, I guess, of smaller trees that are not really connected. Like, look at this thing. That's that's barely even... What's it even doing, right? Uh, so yeah. So I mean, before I get started, uh, Sidereal Collapse is not a live thing. So it's it's a thing that I've uh, made in Bitwig Studio, which is a DAW. Uh, and that kind of makes the process like immediately different uh, from what it seems like they're expecting. I mean, the, the typical use case for cables seems to be like either a completely generative approach or something that responds to uh, to like live inputs. And what we've got in here is that we've got something that's essentially pre-recorded. Uh, and yeah, let me let me just show you what I mean. Uh, uh, at the heart of everything is the MIDI file. If you're like a '90s kid, you will probably remember that we had a uh, we had those for days. That was basically the uh, what do we had for music playing back in the day? It was like all synthesizers with this crappy ad lib quality to them, and we loved it. Uh, so yeah, so basically, what we can do is we can export a MIDI file uh, from any DAW, I mean, even FL Studio can do that, so go figure. Uh, and we can, like, load it up in here. But we, before we can use that, uh, what we gotta do is convert it to MIDI JSON uh, op, which what it does is it spits out an object that looks kind of like this. We've got a separate thing for track names, Got uh, progress, which we'll go in a uh, into detail in a bit. We've got velocity data, which if you're uh, if you've done music, that should be fairly self-explanatory. If not, that's basically how hard you are hitting a uh, given key or like a given note. Uh, so this essentially uh, MIDI JSON kind of gives you a snapshot of what your track is doing at any given time, right? So you gotta hook it up to what's called a timeline time, and this binds uh, binds everything to uh, to this to essentially the timeline. If we go through it, you can see uh, cables lighting up whenever things are happening related to to the track itself. Uh, and yeah, and that's the heart of it. And if we go into into that object again and move some time later, we can see that the uh, that this thing looks slightly different. Like for example, this track is now playing a note uh, E two of uh, progress like this, and with this velocity. So if we let play a bit, which I don't think we can do, but if we play it a little bit, you can see that the uh, progress is gonna drop because that's counting from one uh, from uh, like just let me sh make sure I'm not getting this wrong, but it, it's either counting from zero to one 
or from one to zero, one, one or the other. I, I'm pretty sure it's uh, going from zero to one, but like, don't quote me on that. Mm, and that will be useful in a moment. Uh, but before, uh, let's get back to the fact, why are they all disconnected? I mean, you probably can see that if this was a single thing, that would be a complete, absolute, unmanageable mess, especially since we uh, we kind of want to improvise this. Uh, we want to like see what works visually, what doesn't, and we want uh, to be able to experiment with the visuals on the fly, which you couldn't really do with this giant tree where... Uh, it's kind of hard to move the pieces that are related uh, in a simple way. So what we do, uh, how we can accomplish that is two things. For one thing, we've got uh, those and those are called, uh, let me just, let me just uh, minimize that. And things like those are called trigger sends. And this basically you wire it up as if it were a uh, something that accepts a trigger. And you can see that it doesn't seem to have any, any outputs associated with that. That's because this connects to a different thing. Uh, okay, so for example, if we want to be like strict, and this maps to, the, to this one, but who's counting? Uh, so if we go to this, you can see it's, a trigger receive and it expects a kind of a name parameter that needs to match with whatever you've changed uh, set in here. So that's one part of the equation and that lets you uh, that lets you remove the uh, the need to connect everything for one thing to the main loop. You can see that it's just chilling over here. Uh, it's got its own separate thing that's also handling the audio playback. And yeah, and we can just, just extract it out and not worry about it uh, ever again, essentially. Unless we're we're doing something uh, like specific with... Ah, okay, so that's, that doesn't want to be dragged. Uh, but yeah, but unless we're doing anything specific with, with this... It's uh, we can just let it chill way over there and not bother us uh, at any point. So that's one part of the puzzle, and it already lets you simplify a lot of things. For example, in here you can see that this doesn't really uh, need any any other connections except one. Here we've got a, another piece of a puzzle that's critical to separating everything. And it's called a uh, var set. And that's essentially a whole category of operations. Because you can set variables that are uh, of different types. For example, this one is a uh, texture. And this is like super powerful. You can have like your entire uh, layer of compositions uh, doing its own thing. And what's even cooler, if, if you click on image compose, you can see that it's only showing you this part of what you're doing right now uh, that's that's connected to this so you can really like focus on what you're doing right now so let me show you what the uh let's say ominous circles layer looks like right so if we click on this image compose, you can see that it's got those circles that are gonna show up after like the main chorus. And you see it's it's live actually. So let's go. Yeah, you can see over here, uh, those match with this. So like I said, you can really fine tune um, your separate parts of the composition before you uh, merge it together into like, for example, this. Because this, as you can see, is pretty much, it's complete except for that circle thing. Uh, and yeah, and uh, essentially that's the main uh, takeaways that I've, uh, I've got from like this as my first project. So being able to split up the, oh, 
yeah, actually almost forgot with the data sets and data gets where we can also set up the uh, the numbers and strings and what have you basically. Mm. So here we are controlling, uh, we are sending the velocities of all the instruments we've got going on and here we send the progress. So, I mean, at first I was kind of worried that those two parameters per instrument would be insufficient. Because, I mean, for example, you might be interested in getting the pitch and so on. And yeah, and it probably is because, uh, I mean, it's always better to have more data points that you can use to control all the cool visuals that you can uh, you can create with this than having fewer of them, right? But yeah, but it's surprisingly a lot that you can accomplish with just these two uh, alone. And what's particularly interesting from the perspective of like amateur musician, it really makes you think about the velocities, not be just because it makes your sound different, but also what it does is it gives slightly different data points, which allow you to uh, to like add more variety to to the visual aspect of things. So yeah, so it really is kind of eye opening in terms of uh, workflow. And yeah, and in terms of what I got going on, I hope this was kind of informative for you. Uh, yeah, okay, let me just, just uh, do one thing about the compose things. So yeah, basically with each layer, my process would be this. I wire up the main loop, which is coming from, like I said, this whole thing that's uh, that's way over there. Uh, then I set up the image compose that will give me the preview of whatever I'm working on. Then do my thing over here. And then once I'm done, have this output and then this can be uh, directed to wherever. Let's let's have a quick look at the uh, final comp over here. And again, this one is also using the main loop uh, trigger receive. And yeah, and the compose is just basically what you see here, right? Uh, so yeah, so. Also note that once we've got that variable texture, we can also preview what, what we've got going on at any stage. So maybe you want to add like a viz texture, which would give you a visualization that you can see all the time in your diagram. Uh, but yeah, but you can also have those in a separate place because there's nothing really stopping you from like having another uh, get texture and like, Having another one like right next to it, we, we can uh, do another background layers and it doesn't care. It uh, Cables doesn't care. It just points at the same same object. It doesn't seem to be like any overhead of having many of those. So yeah, really, really cool stuff. And yeah, and I hope this was kind of enlightening to, to anyone and that you will use this for good and not for evil. So yeah, that, I guess that's it. Uh, Voice KC signing off.